الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وبارك وسلم I welcome you all uh, to uh, another session of our lectures uh, for Afghanistan economy in today's lecture we'll be specifically talking about the monetary policy of Afghanistan uh, but before that we'll have a short discussion on um, uh, the fiscal policy um, and then uh, we'll have a short discussion on monetary policy in general and then, then we'll have main discussion on the uh, monetary policy of Afghanistan <coughs> so let's begin with the with the fiscal policy what is fiscal policy fiscal policy is uh, one of the most important tools uh, or policies uh, made by the governments in order to bring economic changes in the country. So one of the policy which is very important is the fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is basically a plan of how government is going to collect the revenue or uh, generate the revenue and then how that revenue is going to be spent in order to bring macroeconomic uh, developments or st stability in the country. By macroeconomic development or enhancement in the country, we mean aggregate demands of the goods and services, employment, inflation, and economic growth, general economic growth. So with the help of fiscal policy, government achieves these objectives. <coughs> Fiscal policy is the mean by which government adjusts its spending levels and tax rates to monitor and influence a nation's economy. It is the sister strategy to the monetary policy, as I said earlier, that fiscal and monetary policy, they work side by side. So monetary policy uh, is made by the central bank in order to influence the nation's money supply. So, <clears throat> using a matrix of monetary and fiscal policy, governments can control economic phenomena. So that's um, uh, all about the fiscal policy, a short discussion about the fiscal policy. <clears throat> there are some terms used uh, while preparing uh, fiscal policy or while having discussion on the fiscal policy, uh, and those uh, terminologies are off the budget and on the budget. In simple words, we can say off the budget is all that money which comes from aid or we can say that the revenue which comes from aid or assistance uh, which are controlled by the donor bodies uh, which is not the internal revenue of the country and over that the government has less control means they cannot be spent in a way that the government want but rather they are going to be spent in the projects where the donor want to spend so all the all the money or or the revenue which is not controlled by the government or which has government has less control over that uh, that's called the off the budget and off the budget is usually the money coming in from the assistances the aids, uh, the the donations, and all that. And on the budget is basically all that money or revenue generated from inside the country through economic, through tax, uh, through tax, or through customs, or through uh, any other uh, investments by the government, uh, over which government has uh, a full control. In uh, it, uh, the government can easily, uh, I mean. Uh, control it means spend or does not spend the way uh, or the project in the projects that they want in Afghanistan any assistance that are spent outside the national budget are considered of the budget assistance in other words assistance provided by donor or implementing agency that bypasses the core national budget and over which the government has no control is considered of the budget assistance so that's um, a little bit about the fiscal policy. 
Now, <clears throat> we'll have a bit more discussion on the fiscal policy. As we earlier discussed what fiscal policy is, <clears throat> it's basically uh, the policy or plan about the government collections and expenditures, where to spend and how to spend, uh, from where the revenue should be generated and how it should be generated. I mean, the decision about the increase or decrease on the on the on the uh, of the tax rates it totally is the part of the fiscal policy. So fiscal policy is government how government uh, tax collection and spending policy affect the macro macro economy. The main purpose of the fiscal policy is to root or to plan your collections means the revenue and your sp spendings in a way that brings an overall uh, uh, change in the macro economy or in the aggregate demand. So fiscal policy is the control of two sides, incomes and expenditures. Sometimes there are budget deficits and sometimes there are uh, um, budget surpluses. In case of budget deficits, so first of all let's talk about budget deficit. When, when our expend, uh, spendings are more, expenditures are more than the revenue collection, that's called budget deficit. But when we have more revenue, more taxes, or more uh, income than the expenditures, that's called budget surplus. So in case of budget deficit, governments mainly borrow money from, from, the, from international community or from, from other countries or from, from international financial uh, bodies like IMF, World Bank, etc. Or maybe they issue bonds or um, they focus on the foreign aid. So these are the three ways through, it, through which we can um, uh, nullify the budget deficit. <clears throat> Fiscal policy is a key instrument of the macroeconomic stability. And the budget is its important tool. Smart fiscal policy brings strong economic growth in the country. And proper budget allocations, as I, we discussed earlier, budget is the key of the, or we can say important tool of the uh, fiscal policy. So budget allocations enables reconstruction of the basic infrastructure, private sector development, improves economic efficiency, enhances the population, uh, standards of life. So these uh, four big um, objectives could be achieved with the help of proper budget allocation, which is the key tool of the uh, fiscal policy. The government usually tries to incre increase the revenue or internal revenue by uh, revenue uh, by improving the revenue administration means bringing the. Um, stability uh, or improvement uh, in the uh, budget collection department I'm sorry revenue collection department which is uh, the Ministry of Finance in Afghanistan within the Ministry of Finance there is a, a, a department called revenue department revenue and customs department so that's basically uh, the uh, responsible department for uh, collection of the revenue in preparing the budget for the government. Enforcement and broadening of the tax base, like in order to uh, generate more revenue, not only it's important that we should have a capable a human resource working within the uh, machinery of the government, but also the enforcement of the tax law in order to cover the entire population of the country. So through this way, uh, we can generate more revenue. Uh, with the fiscal policy, four macroeconomic uh, goals can be achieved. Number one is economic growth. Number two is unemployment, reduction in employment. And number three is reduction in inflation. And number four is sustainable balance of trade. Balance of trade means that our exports should be more than our imports. So it's an obvious thing when there is employment, when there is controlled inflation, when there is economic growth, so definitely we'll generate more, we'll produce more, resulting in the export and resulting in the reduction of the imports and increase in the exports. 
So, so that, that was a little bit about the uh, fiscal policy. Now let's talk about the monetary policy. <coughs> what is monetary policy? As I told you earlier that these policies go side by side and one of the most important uh, policies by the government. A mon monetary policy is basically a policy made by the um, central bank in, for the purpose of controlling the money supply in the economy, in the national economy. And this could be expansionary or contractionary. When we say expansionary, in the expansionary, uh, expansionary mon uh, monetary policy, the money supply is increased, while in the contraction, contractionary monetary policy, uh, the money supply is, uh, money is taken out of the country. So monetary policy is basically the expansion or contraction of the money supply by the central bank. Central bank's main job is enact or legalize monetary policy. And the purpose of monetary policy is to encourage or discourage the aggregate demand of the national currency. So encourage or discourage. When we, we want to encourage, when the government or the central bank want to encourage the money, uh, the, the money, the aggregate demand to the national currency, what do they do is basically they inject out the national currency from the market by injecting in the international currency or the uh, which is the dollar when they want to discourage they do it by by supplying in the national currency in buying back all the international currency from the national market so through through this they control uh, the supply of the national currency within the market so the value of the national currency does not go beyond the limits there are usually i mean throughout the world three traditional tools of the monetary policy are used Number one is reserve requirement, number two is discount rate, and number three is open market operations. Reserve requirement and discount rate, they basically they work within the financial system, within the banking sector mostly. Uh, the central bank uh, do expansion and contraction by increase and decrease of the reserve requirements. And similarly, by increase and de decrease in the discount rates or interest rates, they contract or expand the monetary uh, the, the the money supply of of the national currency to the market. In open market operations, uh, this is done um, by the central bank uh, outside the banking sector or financial system. It's in the open market. They supply the international currency and then they buy back the international currency. So with the help of these three tools, they control the uh, money supply of the national currency and don't let the monetary, uh, uh, the, the international currency to lose its value beyond the limits. Uh, there has is an, a new tool um, introduced uh, after 2008, which is quantitative easing. This is the introduction of new money into money supply by central bank, also known as large-scale asset purchase, as a monetary policy whereby a central bank buys the uh, predetermined amount of government bonds or the financial assets in order to inject money directly into the economy. Like It's also uh, the intervention of the central bank in the open market, in the financial market, by buying the assets, financial assets from the from the market, and then selling them back uh, to the uh, financial market. So this tool uh, is not applicable uh, mostly in Afghanistan um, uh, as a public uh, activity. Uh, it could be within the banks um, because in Afghanistan uh, there is a lack of stock exchange or a financial market where buyers and sellers can buy buy and sell uh, these financial assets and do business. 
there are two types of monetary policies one is called expansionary monetary policy or loose monetary policy and the second one is called con contractionary or tight monetary policy in the expansionary monetary policy there is the interest rates reduces the reserve requir requirement reduces and government buys bonds and financial instruments so by doing these three things basically what what do they do they basically leave the national currency within the market for the circulation which result, results in the uh, discourage discouraging of the demand like when interest rates are reduced by the by the uh, central bank so all the banks they borrow money from the central bank so more money comes into the market also when reserve requirements are reduced means there will be less money coming into the central bank as a reserve from the commercial banks so most of the money will be in the circulation within the market when central bank purchases financial instruments and bonds from the market in return they will inject in the national currency so by these these three activities there will be existence more existence of the I mean more supply of the national currency the national currency will be more in the circulation as a result with the passage of with the passage of time what will happen the demand will because supply is more so definitely demand will reduce when there is no demand and there is supply what happens the value reduces right and when con con uh, contractionary monetary policy or tight monetary policy usually the central bank increases the interest rates so no banks nobody buys or borrows money from the central bank which means that the most of the money it uh, 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 remains within the central bank the central bank increases the reserve requirement means that more the commercial bank should bring in more money as a reserve to the central bank every day so there is more money coming into the central bank and getting out injecting out from the market in the from the circulation also the central bank sells out the bonds and financial instruments so all the financial uh, organizations or the banks they buy the those bonds and financial instruments what happens is they bring in money to the central bank so by this all the money which exists not all but the amount of money which central bank wants to inject out from the market is injected out what happens is the demand is encouraged I mean with the passage of time the demand for the national currency will increase and when demand increases the value will also go up so sometimes there is expansionary sometimes there is contraction you're looking at the situation monetary policy as uh, the, the one is the central bank uh, they use one of these two uh, monetary policy types in order to regulate the the money supply to the market monetary policy is not reliable for controlling deflation and managing bubble burst <clears throat> deflation is a very serious situation monetary policy cannot control deflation and also monetary policy cannot control the bubble burst bubble burst is when something has becomes more valuable or its value increases more than its intrinsic value and when it re re reaches to a limit uh, after which that thing cannot absorb usually financial instrument the m more value what happens is the bubble it bursts like it collapse with the co with, with the collapse of this bubble you know bubble bubble is when um, you put soup in the in the water so there are bubbles like right? and those bubbles when they reach to a certain limit when their size is increased so after a certain limit it bursts so when it bursts there is nothing left so it's the same situation uh, within the financial market some financial instruments there is artificial demand for that and that demand increases 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 and there is a certain limit where that financial instrument cannot uh, bear more value and then it bursts with the burst of that the value directly goes down it goes to the negative and most of the people they affect like in there were financial crisis um, during uh, the previous decade 
in 2008 and in 2005 and 2010. Uh, and the main uh, reason behind those financial crisis was the bubble burst. Now let's talk about the monetary policy of Afghanistan, which is our main topic of today's discussion. As earlier discussed, the Afghanistan bank, known as DABS, uh, is basically the central bank of Afghanistan. It's responsible for making of the monetary policy. It means that under the, the Afghanistan bank law, 2013, Article 62 of the law states, the Afghanistan bank shall be responsible for the formulation adaptation and execution of the monetary policy of Afghanistan. It means that there are three, st three stages of the monetary policy. Formulation stage, adaptation stage and execution stage. All these three functions are the main responsibility of the, monetary, uh, of the central bank of Afghanistan which is called the Afghanistan bank and it's under article 62 of the uh, Afghanistan bank law. Monetary policy refers to the policy undertaken by the Afghanistan Bank with regards to use of money monetary instrument under its control to achieve the goal specified in the law. So we will discuss what are those goals uh, of the uh, monetary policy which is mentioned by the law. We will discuss them later on. Monetary policy of Afghanistan involves use of instruments to influence money supply in the economy aiming to O aiming at overall prices and financial system stability. Like the main purpose is to bring stability in the overall prices and financial system. Low and stable inflation provide favorable conditions for sustainable growth and employment generation over time. So like the other purpose of the monetary policy is to control the inflation. With the control inflation, employment will be generated and economic growth uh, will happen. How does monetary policy work in Afghanistan? So the Afghanistan Bank signals its monetary policy stands through adjustments in the monetary su money supply in the market. Changes in money supply will impact demand in the market. To maintain its primary objective of domestic price stability, the Afghanistan Bank has adopted a framework which is known as monetary policy aggregate targeting framework which we will be discussing later on. Controlling liquidity conditions is highly important in the economy, hence any changes in the rate of liquidity have a direct impact on the overall economic activities in the country. Liquidity here means easily convertible into cash without significant uh, change in the price. Therefore changes in the liquidity rate should be consistent with the rate of economic growth as well as the demand for the national currency and the economy. Like liquidity and economic growth should go side by side and also the demand for the national currency. If there is disequilibrium in these three things, the inflation will come which will affect the entire uh, economy. So let's now talk about the monetary policy framework in Afghanistan. It's divided into uh, three parts. The first one is objectives. As per the law, Article 2 of the Afghanistan Bank Law, objectives are 2.1. It said the primary objective of the Afghanistan Bank shall be to achieve and maintain domestic price stability. So the first goal is to achieve and maintain domestic price stability. That's the first goal of the monetary policy. Number two, um, To foster the liquidity, liquidity, solvency, and effective functioning of stable market-based financial system, and to promote a safe, sound, and efficient national payment system. So this is basically a very long objective. Let's let me divide it. Objective number two is to foster li uh, the liquidity and solvency and effective functioning of the stable market market-based financial system right 
effective functioning of stable market based financial system right and to promote safe and sound financial uh, efficient national payment system so that's the second uh, main objective of the fiscal policy without prejudice to its primary objective the Wanasan bank shall support general economic policies of the state and promote sustainable economic growth that's the third basically if we divide these three main objectives it will become like five and six objectives which will which will be number one to achieve and maintain domestic price stability number two to foster the liquidity solvency and effective uh, fu functioning of the stable market-based financial system number three to promote safe and sound financial uh, safe and sound and efficient national payment system number four is going to be uh, to support general economic policies of the state and number five is going to be to promote sustainable economic growth so these are the five main objectives of the monetary policy as per the Afghanistan bank law article number two so within the monetary policy framework number two is monetary policy formulation and execution or decision making the one Sun bank is responsible and fully empowered to make the monetary policy decisions in Afghanistan as per the article 2.1 based on the article of the law the one Sun bank is responsible for adoption and formulation of the monetary policy in Afghanistan for this purpose Monetary Policy Committee, uh, Committee, it's called MPC, Monetary Policy Committee, Committee, is established and is chaired by the Governor of the Afghanistan Bank. Uh, first, Deputy Governor acts as a Deputy Chairman member of the Supreme Council as members and Monetary Policy Director. And General acts as a Secretary of the Committee. So that's the basically the structure of the Committee. The Monetary Policy Committee closely works with the Monetary Policy Department, uh, Market Operations Department, and Financial Supervision Department. These are basically, uh, there is a committee chaired by the Governor, and there are three main departments within the Central Bank. <coughs> it's called Monetary Policy Department, Market Operations Department, Financial Supervision Department. So this committee, uh, Monetary Policy Committee, they closely work with these three departments in order to formulate, execute, and control the monetary policy. Monetary Policy Committee tasks. That's the third thing under the framework. Monetary Policy Committee's main task is to execute the main uh, uh, tasks of the Dawanasan Bank as per the law of the Dawanasan, which are, number one, what are those main tasks, number one, Formulation, adoption, and execution of monetary policy. Number two, formulation of reserve policy and DEBS reserve position in accordance with the DEBS law. Imposing regulations on execution of exchange rate policy and open market operations. Decision making on keeping and management of the Afghanistan Bank's reserves as determined in the DEBS law. Number five, Approval of regulation of the facilities, <coughs> e-transactions among the Afghanistan Bank, banks and their customers. Approval of the regulation to regulate repo rates and interest rates. Repo, repo means repurchase agreements. Repurchase agreements, uh, most of the finance students will know. Repurchase agreements are one of the short-term uh, financial instruments uh, used to finance the short-term needs of of the finances by the uh, by the companies number seven signing international clearing and payments agreements so these are the seven main tasks of the monetary policy committee and the objectives of uh, uh, monetary policy in Monetary Policy Committee, they work closely with three departments, Monetary Policy Department, Open Market Operations Department, and Financial System Department, uh, uh, Financial Supervision Department, in order to achieve these seven 
uh, goals or these seven tasks. So let's talk about the minority policy communication. Reporting and minority policy. Reporting on minority policy. Part of the Article 105, the Afghanistan Bank shall report in writing to the President and the Minister of Finance <coughs> of Afghanistan if, if at any time the net foreign reserve position uh, across the Afghanistan Bank reserve accounts declined by more than 20 over a seven day period. Means when there is the reduction of the reserves within the treasury of the bank by 20% for a seven day period, the, the, the central bank is going to report to the president and the minister of finance. That's how it works in Afghanistan. For the article 105.2, <coughs> Semi-annually, the Afghanistan Bank shall deliver the, to the Parliament of Afghanistan and publish a policy statement that shall contain a <coughs> description of and all explanation of the reasons for the monetary policies to be followed by the Afghanistan Bank during the next six months, a description of the principle uh, that Afghanistan Bank uh, proposes to follow in adoption and execution of monetary policy during the next two years or a longer period of time, a review and assessment of the adaptation and execution by the Afghanistan Bank of Monetary Policy during the period to which the last preceding six months policy statement relates. Like <coughs> the second time that they need to communicate uh, is semi annually to the parliament, and while they write a report to the parliament, they have to mention three things which we discussed earlier. Monetary policy decisions are issued in every quarter four times a year after the meetings of the Monetary Policy Committee members. They contain brief analysis of economic conditions and rationale and rationale behind the monetary policy decisions made to achieve the ultimate objectives of the monetary policy, which is price stability in Afghanistan. DAVES communicates its monetary policy stance primarily uh, through its website and that social media accounts. The governor makes a press conference usually after each monetary policy committee meeting to present the monetary policy stance to media in addition to uploading the decisions on website and press release. That's how uh, it works uh, with regards to communication of the monetary policy in Afghanistan. And a bit to improve the communication of monetary policy and transparency, DEPS will also publish minutes of the monetary policy committee meeting on its website. That's the that's the other thing that they will do in order to bring transparency in the communication of the monetary policy. It shows basically how important is the monetary policy. The purpose of communication is to bring uh, this into the information of every individual living in the country as a citizen of Afghanistan uh, so they know what's happening with the national currency. Number two is exchange rate policy, <clears throat> that's annual. In the light of Article 69 of the Afghanistan Bank Law, formulating, adopting, and execution of the exchange rate policy is one of the main responsibility of the central bank. Among the eight exchange rate regimes in the world, the Afghanistan Bank has adopted the managed floating exchange rate regime. Like you, you guys should now like search on exchange rate regimes in the world it says that there are eight exchange rate regimes in the world so you guys know what are those eight exchange rate regimes in the world and then we in Afghanistan we have managed floating exchange rate like it's semi free exchange rate under this exchange rate framework the exchange rate is determined by the demand and supply factors the exchange rate regime is adopted based on economic conditions, balance of payments, exports and imports, and taking into account the degree of openness of the economy, currency inflow and outflow. Uh, so uh, when the intervention of the central bank, it's based on these principles. Under this framework, the Afghanistan Bank does not target the exchange rate. Meanwhile, considering the negative impacts of the exchange rate, Inflations on investors, consumers, and other economic agents, expectations, as well as the level of overall domestic prices. The central bank monitors the exchange rate behavior and puts it, its efforts to prevent serious fluctuations in the exchange rate. Uh, <clears throat> when 
the central bank sees that um, usually like we hear in the in, as a layman we say that the the rate of uh, the exchange rate the, the 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 rate of dollar the value of dollar has increased or the rate of uh, the value of dollar has decreased it's not the way like as a layman we can say that but the, as as the students of economics we shouldn't say like that it's not the dollar who is increasing whose rate increases or decreases it's rather our national currency whose value increases or decreases and it's the as a result of the monetary policy sometimes it increases and sometimes it de decreases right international currency remains at the same level it's the monet it's the international uh, our national or local currency which has increased or decreased in its uh, in its value look every currency has two exchange rates number one is nominal exchange rate and number two is market exchange rate <coughs> nominal exchange rate is basically an exchange rate which was set at first time when the national currency was was issued and if you remember when new these new Afghani banknotes were issued what was the nominal rate it was one dollar equals to 50 Afghani right there was a time I remember which uh, one dollar was equal to 45 Afghani means that uh, due to the existence of more dollar currency in Afghanistan in Karzai's uh, regime uh, 10 years of Karzai there, there, there were more money dollars coming into the country so there was a time when dollar reached to 45 like Afghani was less in the market as compared to dollars so there was demand for for Afghani and less demand for the dollars. So that's why dollar reaches to 45. Now it's the time that we have dollar uh, one dollar equaling to 77 Afghani. Like now the market rate is 77 Afghani. One dollar equals to 77 Afghani means that the dollar the the, the Afghani has lost its value <coughs> by 25 Afghanis per dollar for the last 20 years right <clears throat> core functions what are the core functions of the monetary policy or the monetary policy department the damn monetary policy department is responsible to formulate implement a sound and robust monetary policy robust monetary policy uh, monetary policy means robust here means smart smart right to carry out uh, produce state-of-the-art research and analyze to carry out a research or produce state-of-the-art research state-of-the-art research mean a research analysis based on the solid factors <coughs> to compile economic statistics on on the real monetary fiscal and external sectors of the economy and corporate governan governance uh, risk so that these are the functions of the uh, monetary policy department the research analysis are published in the quarterly and annual bulletins of the Afghanistan Bank the monetary policy department also prepares report for Parliament president's office and other key ministries the Afghanistan Bank encourages financial institutions to grant loans to commercial customers SMEs and construction companies etc basically uh, how they encourage by reducing the reserve requirement by reducing the interest rates this is the way that they can encourage the uh, commercial banks in order to uh, issue loans to the people when the central bank charges less um, interest or return from the commercial banks so the commercial bank will ultimately charge less from the customers when the central bank increases its uh, uh, rate of return so definitely the commercial bank will also increase their rate of return resulting in in uh, discouraging of the customers to to get loan from the from the banks <coughs> what will happen at the end of the day is there will be economic activity in the country economic stability in the country generation of the uh, employment resulting in control inflation and all that <coughs> so there are two monetary policy uh, instruments here open market operations and foreign exchange auctions 
we discussed them earlier uh, so basically um, uh, instrument one we can say is capital notes auction instrument two is standing facility instrument three is reserve required reserve ratio so with the help of uh, these three instruments uh, the one sun bank the monetary policy department or monetary policy committee they control the money supply to the market in Afghanistan and the main purpose is to bring stability and economic growth and save the financial system from collapse and bring in uh, aggregate demand of the national currency uh, in the market so that's all for today's lecture thank you very much for being with me if you have any questions any any suggestions please get back to me I'm more than happy to assist thank you so much and bye now